I want to talk to you tonight on the subject of God is in control. God is in control. And there's outlines at the back if you want to pick up an outline or didn't have a chance to get one. Let me give you the outline. Number one, Paul encourages them. Paul encourages them. Number two, Paul reminds them. You know, we all need reminders. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just thinking as we get older, those stick it things, those square things I put around, <laughs> you know, my office or my house so I can remember things. And number three, Paul prays for them. Paul prays for them. You know, in the second Thessalonians here, uh, the Christians there uh, were real grateful for Paul's first letter, but it seemed that things were getting worse, not better. And uh, folks, sometimes that's what happens in our own lives. I try to caution people not to make this statement, what else could go wrong? Because you are voicing that out loud, and Satan can't, he can't read your mind, but he can hear what you say. So I, I just say, uh, because I promise you something else could go wrong, and a lot of times it's even worse than what you're going through. But you have to understand, it's a time of testing, okay? It's a time of testing many times. Trials and tribulations were more intense uh, to the point, uh, some thought the day of the Lord was happening right then. This is why Paul wrote the second letter to the people in Thessalonica. Paul first commended them for their endurance and suffering. They had chosen to say no to the world and yes to righteousness, uh, which caused them to be persecuted. Paul was reminding them that their strong faith and grace would win in the end and that there were rewards waiting for them uh, when all is said and done. Let's look at this wonderful scripture and study it together. Number one, Paul encouraged them. Paul and Sylvanius and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, Paul used these words many times in his introductions. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, we all need God's grace, okay? And, and Paul was a, a man that understood grace because he was uh, given the grace from God. And we all need peace, all right? And uh, people are searching for peace. And folks, the only way you can have true peace in your life is to know the Prince of Peace. You have to know God. Number three, verse three, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, and is as fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. And he's just talking about how they, as a congregation, has grown in the Lord. And folks, I am telling you, uh, love is the key, all right? If people come in here and we are friendly to them and and uh, we talk to them, and, and they sense a love that we have for one another and a love that we have for God, I'm telling you, they're going to come back. And so Paul here was uh, complimenting them about uh, the love that they had towards each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So he is saying, I talk about you guys. I talk about your church. I talk about how much persecution that y'all have been under. But yet, he uses the, the word patience there. Okay, And I, I've said this, and I'll say this to the day I die. Of the nine fruits of the spirits, I believe that patience is the last one that most of us Christians master. Okay, So he's just saying, you know, y'all have been very patient under, you know, situations of suffering especially. And it says, and persecutions, excuse me, and faith in all your persecutions. And folks, it's so important that we do not lose our faith, okay? Not lose our faith, that we, we do not waver in our faith. Uh, even when things are bad and things seem like they're unfair, okay? God is there. God's going to get you. Uh, through it, uh, you know, we are never left alone, okay? He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. 
So in this persecution, he is just basically saying the reason you are persecuted is because you are living for Christ. Living for Christ. Matter of fact, 2 Timothy 3.12, it says in 2 Timothy 3.12, yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. So do not be surprised is what he was telling the church there and the members there, all right? You are doing the right thing, and there are people out there. And folks, I'm telling you, the devil loves to stir things up, okay? He loves to attack Christians. He loves to attack churches. But I love the verse uh, in John 4, 4, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then John chapter 15, John 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will lo- world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So we see there that he is basically saying, you know, when Jesus was here, he was persecuted. All right, there was always scribes and Pharisees there. Uh, they always would you know, say, you are not the Messiah, you are not Jesus, you know, God is not your Father. All these things would be going on, and they hated Jesus. And they hated him so much, I mean, obviously they killed him. All right, he died on a cross for what he believed and who he was. So basically Paul is saying, even in this persecution, you have stayed strong. You have not wavered in your faith, and I want to commend you, and I want to encourage you to stay strong. And folks, it's like everything in life. There are seasons that we have in our life. And sometimes we hit seasons where, you know, we are being persecuted and things don't go well. But I'm just telling you, uh, I think it was Warren Wiersbe that said, a faith that could not be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. When we go through these things, it's like that the, the fires of life. It's not judgment. God is purifying our hearts. God is purifying our motives. God is letting us understand we depend on God for everything. So Paul encouraged them. And not only did he encourage them, he reminds them. Look at verse 5, which is manifest evidence of the righteousness of the judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. And anytime uh, you see the word manifest, it means something is brought to light. All right, he is telling them, you know, that there's evidence that even in righteousness, okay, because there's there's some Christians just, and, and I've heard them say, even when I've counseled, I'm trying to do the right thing, I'm trying to this, but it just, It just doesn't seem to be working. You know, God may not be hearing my prayers. And and he is simply saying, it's probably just a season that you go through, and it's a temporary thing. Folks, if you think about life, I mean, let's say you live to be 80. I mean, if you're you're 80, I'm I'm just telling you, folks, you've had a long life and you've had a blessed life. And to me, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the, the cherry on top of the Sunday. You don't have to have the cherry, but man, that, you know, that's the first thing you do. And when I get a Sunday, I, I eat the cherry right on top. And we're, and, and, and we're so blessed to be, uh, you know, to have what we have and, and to be able to walk in here, to be able to drive, to do, do these things. So we need to understand, all right, that, that not, it's not always judgment, okay? God's not mad at us. God's not taking this out on us. Folks, we never arrive spiritually. We all need to continue to grow. Uh, 2 Peter 3.18 in the grace and the knowledge in our Lord Jesus Christ. So it says that you may count it worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer. If somebody told you that living the Christian life is easy, I don't know where they got that at. You think of the, the folks in these days. I mean, you think of the apostles I mean, three-fourths of them died for the cause of Christ. You think of Paul and all that he went through. There was suffering in all of that. And 
Paul is simply trying to remind them, you are not being punished for what's going on, all right? It's, it's a testing time. And it says, uh, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and give you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the G Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So what's the next thing he says? God's got this is what he's saying. He's saying, hey, if they're going to hassle you, uh, he, God's going to intervene and take care of them. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, it doesn't see, it seems like the evil people are the ones that are winning right now. Well, folks, they may win a battle or two here on earth, but I got news for you, folks. God's going to, you know, judge them, and God's going to do the right thing. I mean, we're studying Revelation, you know, on Sunday mornings, and that's what it's all about, folks. I'm telling you, God is coming back. Je Jesus is coming back, and he is going to settle the score. All right, man messed it up, and we live in a fallen world. But God is going to be with them and take care of them. That's what he is saying. In Verse 8, in flaming fire, take vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not, do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here he is saying, in the end, the Christians are going to win. They're going to win. Uh, 2 Corinthians. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Folks, when we are going through hard times, when we are suffering, when there's persecution, we don't need to lose heart. We don't need to say, why me, Lord? Okay? We don't need to give up. We don't need to think, is this really worth it? Okay? Because those before us suffered much persecution. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And folks, you have to understand, no matter what's going on in your life, you need to keep those lines of communication open with God. You need to pray more, not less. You need to read your Bible more, not less. And here's the other thing. You know, when we're going through hard times, the thought that always comes to my mind, even in my situation that I'm in right now, I mean, it's, it's not comfortable with me. I don't know why it is going on. And the Lord has told me more than once, Mike, there are people much worse off than you are. Go with me to a hospital. Go with me to a VA center, okay? And, and for me, I'm still getting to preach. I'm still getting to not do everything I want to do. But we, we cannot lose heart, folks. God's got a plan. God's got a reason. And while these people were being persecuted and punished for their belief in Christ and their walk with the Lord, God has a plan. Now look at this from Paul. This, this, this is just amazing to me. For our light affliction. <laughs> Think of everything he had been through. I would not call his life a light affliction. All right? I mean, he was beaten, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, he was thrown out of, ta thrown out of towns. He, he had to, you know, sneak out of towns when they, you know, uh, threatened his life. And he says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. And I, I can relate to this, folks. Even if you live 80 years, I'm just telling you, compared to eternity, it's but for a moment. All right? And, and I'm, I'm telling you, the song that comes to my mind right now is, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. And I really believe, even when we get to heaven, folks, I, I, I really believe God's going to uh, just erase the memories of the bad things that we, that we went through in life. Why? Because it's a perfect place. No pain, no sorrow. Okay? And I, I just really, folks... I, 
I think about heaven more now than I ever have in my life. And one of the reasons is, I believe he's coming soon, <laughs> is one of the reasons is, the other reason is, his word says it. For a lot of affliction is but for a moment, working for us far more exceedingly uh, and eternally weight of glory. See, that's the difference in the natural world and the spiritual world. We live in a natural world, but the Christians live in the spiritual world. We see it different from them. Hey, I've been, and I've done funerals where it was a thing of celebration. Not a tear was shed. Why? Because they were happy. They were with the Lord. And I know grieving, I'm not saying you can't grieve. Everybody grieves in different ways. But that hope, I love the word hope. Our hope is in Jesus. And by the way, it's not a hope so thing. All right? It's going to happen, folks. All right? No matter what we go through, God is going to take care of us and encourage us. Far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You, you, you step out of this church and look around, and you know what happens? Everything you see is going to burn up one day. It's, it's not going to be there. All right? God's making all things new. That's why we should not get upset over temporary things. All right? We have to have the right perspective. Paul is reminding them, hey, Christians are going to be taken care of, and God is going to judge the lost. Those mean people, you know, every once in a while, you're just, you're just running into a mean person. I mean, you know, it's like, man, they didn't get out of bed. They fell out of bed. They didn't have breakfast, okay? And if they had it, it was lemon juice, not orange juice. I just, I just think, man, what, what's wrong with you? Why are you mad? And some people are just mad at the world. And folks, don't let those people take your joy away. They don't give you joy. Our joy is in Jesus. So Paul is reminding them of these things. Then Revelation chapter 20, and you know this scripture, but I'm, I'm going to read it to you anyway. Then I saw a great white throne, verse 11, and him who sat on it, whose face uh, the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. God knows everything we did from the day we were born till the day we die. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Folks, I am telling you, it, does, it, it doesn't please me or make me think, well, they're going to get theirs. I, I mean, really, you know, it breaks my heart. Because, folks, I have witnessed to people, and I've witnessed to some more than once or twice. And sometimes it's family members. They just don't get it. They just, they just, they don't. And to realize, according to Scripture and what Paul is saying, he is simply saying, hey, don't dwell on the negative. They're going to get theirs according to God's holy word. Verse 9, these shall be punished. Back in our text, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from his power. And we know hell is real. Folks, death is real. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony uh, uh, among you was believed. And folks, I'm just telling you, the greatest day of your life all right, if you are a Christian, and even if we have to go through death, I'm still holding out on the rapture of the church, but the greatest day in our life is, is when Jesus will come, if, if 
we are caught up together with him. But either way, through death or through the rapture, it'll be the greatest day of our lives. So we see Paul encourages them, Paul reminds them, and then Paul prays for them. Verse 11, therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with, the pow with, with power. And he is basically saying, listen, uh, you know, I'm, I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for your church. I'm praying. And folks, I, I thank God for intercessory prayer. I cannot tell you how many times people... People just randomly sometimes, people will text Lori or send a message, you know, man, tell Mike we're praying for him. Tell, you know, I mean, churches, Cameron Baptist Church will send us reminders and things, you know, and just to realize how many people at First Baptist, Alma, I'll see them out at a restaurant and they say, man, we've been praying for you. Folks, I thank God for intercessory prayer. And if we are not going through those things, folks, to me, I mean, we are the ones that need to pray for those who are going through hard times of tribulation. And it says that our God would count you worthy of his calling and basically saying, just be who you were called to be. Man, you're a Christian. To me, Christians should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Think of all that we have. I mean, think of all that we have. I mean, here on earth, we've got houses. You know, we've got land. We've got vehicles, we've got health, we've got all these things. And then you throw in heaven, my goodness, we ought to dwell and think about those things. To the goodness of his pleasure and the work of faith with power. And folks, the key to all this, praying, believing, keeping the faith, is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Folks, the Holy Spirit is the encourager. The Holy Spirit is our guide. The Holy Spirit is that voice. And, he, and again, I've never heard an audible voice, but I know when God talks to me through the Holy Spirit. He does. And, and, and that uh, should be displayed in our lives, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and you in him according to the grace of our God in the Lord Jesus Christ. And why should we be doing this? Why should we, uh, you know, praise him in the storms of life? So that we can tell people how good our God is. So that we can give God the glory and give God the glory for what is going on in our lives. Folks, I'm just telling you, it's never about us. It's never about me personally. Folks, it is God. It is God who should get the glory. We live our lives to point others to Jesus Christ and to give him the glory. Ephesians 3, and I close with this. Ephesians 3, verse 14. Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. I read one commentary, and it's been a long time ago, but it described Paul at the end of his life, and one of the descriptions was that he had literal uh, blisters, and, and, and he was on his knees so much that they knew he was a man of prayer. Can you imagine being on your knees so much that, that your knees are that way? And you see that all through the epistles, folks. He said, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. For this reason, I bow my news to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from the, who the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Folks, you have to realize we're rich. We're rich. You're thinking, well, man, I'm not rich. Oh, you are. If you're a Christian, you're rich, folks. I'm telling you. And it says, to be strengthened with his might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love. And folks, I'm just telling you, it was love that sent Jesus down from heaven. God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. 
It was love that Jesus had for mankind that he started that journey when he was 30 years old. And folks, he was walking to the cross. And it was love that nailed him to the cross. It was love that extended to us salvation. And that same kind of love is the love that we need to share with others. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And that's the difference, folks. We can love the unlovable through Jesus Christ. We can weather the storms of life through Jesus Christ. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us because we have seen the example of God's love for us and we should love others. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the, de- the length, and the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ which passes, passes knowledge. You know, sometimes when I read a stat about how deep the ocean is, I'm just thinking, I can't fathom that. You know, and the other thing is, I don't want to be at the bottom of that either. All right? But what it's literally saying, and when you look up at the sky and you see the stars and how far they are away, and you think God's love is that deep, God's love is that high. As far as you look one way, folks, if you start on one end of the earth and you circled it, I'm just telling you, his love is infinite. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And I love this verse. Now, to him who is able, folks, our God is able. I mean, you can fill in the blank. What do you need today? He's got it. If, if you're hungry, he is the bread of life. Okay, he is the healer. Jehovah Jireh. There, I mean, he is everything we need. Now, to him who is able to, ex- to do exceedingly abundantly. You know, he could have just said exceedingly. He could have just said abundantly. But I'm telling you, his love, his strength, our God can do anything above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And folks, the power is the key. He has given us the Holy Spirit. So when you're down and, man, you got the mully grubs going and, you know, Satan is just working on you, you know, you can realize that, man, I'm a child of the King. I think of everything that God has given me. I've got the Holy Spirit inside of us. That root word comes from dynamo, dynamo, which means dynamite. Now, folks, dynamite is powerful. And that kind of love is in our hearts. And it says, to him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I've been asked a few times, and usually it's younger people that ask me this, uh, how do you want to be remembered? You know, you, you just got to ponder that question. And more than anything, the short answer is, I want to be remembered as a man that loved God and a man that served God. And folks, I give God all the glory. Anything that's good in my life, I give him the glory. Because I know where I've come from. I know even... Today, I have fallen short of God's grace, but he's always there to encourage me in the faith, to tell me, and man, you can get knocked down. And I had a very short boxing in the boys club when I was in the eighth grade. I won my first match and thought I was something, and the next match, I there was a Native American from uh, Anadarko, Oklahoma, that the last thing I remember, his glove was coming at my head, and my coach was saying, is he going to be all right? Is he going to be all right? And sometime, by the way, that's the only two matches I had. I was done. I got hit so hard. Maybe that's what happened to me, Steve. That, I was think people said I was dropped as a child, but I, I think it was the boxing. 
But I'm just telling you, folks, we're going to get knocked down by life. We're going to be in situations that we don't understand. We're going to be in situations that we don't like. But, folks, we're not alone. Our God is able. Father, thank you for your word. And, God, I just I love this scripture. Gosh, just to think that you're exceedingly in an above, abundantly above all that we think. Man, we're just a speck in all the heavens. We're just a one grain of sand on all the beaches. But yet you loved us and you chose us and you saved us. And you're making us into your children. God, I pray that we sh would show the love of Christ to everyone that we come in contact with. God, I pray that we would understand you're in control. You're never bothered. You never panic. You know our every move. And God, the key is that power, that battery pack. It's the Holy Spirit. So God, I pray that we would live a life that the Holy Spirit just wells up in us. And God, I pray that we would do the right thing every time. And so God, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that God is there. He's he just there, God. And thank you for Jesus Christ who makes all this happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.